So 100,000 women went on strike today in Iceland to demand gender equality. The entire population is 370,000. So over 25% of the population went on strike. And I have some crazy news for you. The economy did not come to a stop and it continued as normal. The only memo I got was that HR departments were getting no complaints for the 24 hours that the women were on strike. And um, <laughs> men were writing that they were really sorry women didn't get gender equality. But I heard uh, one CEO said it was nice to finally get some sh** done, end quote. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel where we break down the most ridiculous internet takes with a solid dose of facts, logic, and maybe a little bit of roasting on the side. For the first time that Ty, my boyfriend, and I together, uh, we were in a top floor apartment and it was dark outside, it was pitch black, and we had all of the lights on. So you could see everything. Uh, halfway through, we realized that the apartments across the road from us could clearly see into the room that we were in uh, and there were people standing there that could see it doing what we were doing so he said oh my gosh so sorry i should shut these and i was like no it's okay i like it i'm into it and he was like cool i like it too i'm into it too uh and so we kept going knowing that people across the street could were watching seeing us and that is how we both realized that we had a shared interest in um people watching us so you and your boyfriend decided to give the neighbors a free show and instead of shutting the blinds, you both went, yeah, let's keep this going, bull chase. Look, if you're both into exhibitionism, cool, but here's the thing your neighbors didn't sign up for front row seats, consent works both ways, and your audience didn't exactly ask for a live performance. You're lucky they didn't turn your moment into a viral sensation or worse, call the cops. So, maybe next time, close the blinds and keep the mystery alive. Just saying. I have this theory about boys and I need to share it with you, because I feel like you need to hear it. And let's be honest, some girls probably do this too, but we're talking about men, okay? In this page, we're talking about men. A guy's with a girl, let's say Tracy and Tony. Now, Tony has been doing the bare minimum, okay? She's floating along doing the bare minimum, and Tracy's just, she's like, yeah, it's fine, I'm happy, I'm in a relationship, he's really fit, so I'm going to let him get away with it. Then, for one reason or another, Tony bins off Tracy. Then Tony starts dating again, and he meets Tina. Now, Tina has boundaries. She also knows her worth. She's not going to settle for the bare minimum. So Tony comes along, starts giving Tina the bare minimum. She's like, what's this? Because of Tony's previous training with Tracy, he's, he's thinking this is fine. He's like, this is, this is what a relationship is. This is how I'm supposed to act. And he starts telling all his friends that she's really high maintenance. The standards are too high. And it ends. And Tina's kind of a little bit like, well, why didn't he want to do that for me? Why didn't he want to give me all those things? Because Tracy trained him that that was okay. She gave him some like positive reinforcement that, that she's going to stay in a relationship with him even if he does the bare minimum. Then, Tony goes off and he gets in another relationship and Tina sees this and it works out. Tony's happy with this new girl, but that's because he's gone back to someone who lets him do the bare minimum. Alright, here's the deal. Tony's been coasting on the bare minimum with Tracy because she let him. She's like, he's feet, so whatever. Now, when Tony meets Tina, who actually has standards, he's shocked when she's not impressed by his low effort. Instead of stepping up, he complains she's to high maintenance. Classic Tony move. But here's the truth, as long as there are Tracys who accept the bare minimum, guys like Tony will keep slacking. If you want a better relationship, be like Tina set your standards and don't settle. And Tony, if you want to keep a woman like Tina, it's time to level up. The bare minimum won't cut it forever. Are women gonna have to start boycotting dating apps? And let me explain, cause we know boycotts work. I was having this discussion with my friends this morning and I think it is food for thought. I think we should seriously think about doing something here. I hate to put this on women, but I think we have to break the cycle here. What has happened is our entire dating life has moved online. And personally, I just don't think that's going to cut it. What I think one of the biggest disconnects is, is that men are on dating apps to hook up and women are on dating apps to find love and relationships. And that's just not, that's just not. All right, let's dive in. So you're thinking about boycotting dating apps because they've turned into hookup central for men. While well, women are out here searching for love, I get it, it's frustrating when the goals don't match up. But here's the red pill truth. Dating apps are designed to cater to male biology quick swipes, instant gratification, and endless options. Men naturally lean towards casual encounters, because that's how the apps are built. Meanwhile, women are looking for something more meaningful, but the platform itself isn't set up for that. Boycotting dating apps, sure, it might send a message, but the real issue is the way 
these apps are designed to prioritize quantity over quality. If women want to break the cycle, it's not just about quitting the apps, it's about changing how we use them and setting standards that weed out the guys who aren't serious. So, yeah, a boycott might help, but the bigger win is knowing the game and playing it smarter. Don't let the apps control your dating life take control of how you use them. That you're having a bad day. I just want you to know that the person who was at the petrol pump before me got one euro of petrol. One euro of petrol. One euro. So, you know, there's always someone having a worse day than you. Don't forget it. <laughs> While you're stressing about your bad day, there's always someone out there dealing with way more and still pushing through. Instead of getting caught up in your own frustrations, maybe take a step back and realize you've got more going for you than you think. If someone can make it work with one euro of petrol, you can definitely handle whatever lies throwing at you today. So, yeah, someone's having a worse day than you, but instead of just feeling better about your situation, maybe use it as motivation to grind harder. Life's all about perspective, and sometimes, a little struggle can fuel a whole lot of determination. What does it mean when a guy unmatches you on a dating app? When you've been chatting outside of the app, you've been going on dates, and then you notice that he unmatches you. Like, I know it's not good, it seems fishy, but what does it mean? All right, so you've been chatting, going on dates, and then boom, unmatches you on the app. Yeah, that's a red flag wrapped in a mystery, but let's break it down. First off, if a guy unmatches you while you're still talking and dating, it's usually not a good sign. It could mean he's trying to cover his tracks. Like maybe he's chatting up other women and doesn't want you to see it. Or he's just not that into you and is slowly backing out without having the guts to say it straight up. But here's the thing. If he's already got your number and you've been on dates, why is he still playing games on the app? That's like saying he's shopping around while he's already in the checkout line with you. Not exactly the kind of guy who's serious about anything long term. So what does it mean? It means he's either sketchy, flaky, or just not worth your time. Instead of stressing over why he unmatched you, take it as a blessing in disguise. You dodged a bullet better to find out now than later. Let him go play his little games while you focus on finding someone who's actually on the same page as you. I just witnessed the most wholesome thing ever. I took myself out to dinner tonight, a little solo date, and I went to eat at the bar. Obviously, when you are on a solo date, eat at the bar, not a table. It makes it feel infinitely more comfortable. And plus, you might meet people like the guy that I met tonight who was sitting by himself eating dinner at the bar next to me, folding origami. He was just there at the bar hanging out, folding origami, eating his dinner, and then we started talking and I found out that his girlfriend is a server at the restaurant and he was there just so he could have some time in close proximity to her because they didn't get a lot of time together. And then I was like, oh, you should make her an origami rose or like bouquet of flowers. And he's like, oh, flowers are actually really hard. All I know how to make is a crane. And then we stopped talking for a bit and while I was eating, I looked over at his phone and he was looking up instructions to make flowers and then he started making her a rose. So if he wanted to, he would. All right, so you went out for a solo dinner, Saturday at the bar, and met a guy folding origami. Turns out, he's there just to be near his girlfriend, who's working as a server. And after a little chat, this guy actually starts googling how to make an origami rose just because you suggested it. Wholesome, absolutely. But let's get real for a second. Here's the thing. This dude is out here making paper cranes and roses at a bar just to be near his girl. While some guys can't even manage to text back in a timely manner. If he wanted to, he would exactly. This guy's setting the bar high, literally and figuratively. While half the guys out, they're still trying to figure out the difference between seen and unread on their DMS. So, what's the takeaway? If a guy's really into you, he's going to show it and you won't need a tutorial to figure out how. Meanwhile, if the guy you're seeing can't even be bothered to put in half the effort, maybe it's time to fold up that relationship and move on. Because if Mr. Origami can do it, so can they. Guys, I just saw the best thing ever. You know how we brought back low-rise jeans in like the 2000s fits or like vintage clothing? Let's bring back vintage love and romance. Let's bring that back, right? I think it's the best thing I've ever thought of because it's just like we're bringing back all these trends and like music and clothes and what about the love y'all like like don't say I'm outside come to the door and bring me flowers 
meet my parents. Call me. I hate texting. I mean, don't call me. I don't... I'm not looking for a relationship or anything in particular. But it's just like... Whenever I do, I'm like... I don't give a f- if it's 2024. Y'all used to go to war. Y'all used to go to war. Alright, so you're saying we should bring back vintage romance, right? Like when guys had to call on the house phone. And getting a date meant facing your entire family first. There were no DMS back. Then dudes had to write love letters. And they'd show up in your mailbox a week later. Sure, that sounds sweet until you realize most of these people were married by 20 and didn't have the option of just taking a break. And yeah, guys went to war back then, which sounds heroic. But remember, many came back with trauma, no job, and still had to pay for everything. Meanwhile, you got flowers. Maybe once a month. We can definitely bring back some of those classic gestures. But let's not act like old school relationships were always perfect. There's a reason why your grandparents probably ended up sleeping in separate rooms by the time they were older. You told me that the love of my life would share the same zodiac sign as me. I have looked far and wide, but I still can't find a clear Taurus. I don't get it. I can't, still can't find a clear Taurus. Wait, why is everyone saying cat? What do they mean by clear Taurus? A megalol? Think about it. I'm a Taurus! <gasps> Alright, hold up. You're looking for a clear Taurus. Man, I think you might have wandered into a different category of search results. Pro tip, it's not a zodiac sign. It's, well, let's just say you've probably seen it mentioned in a very different context. Might want to clear your browser history after this one. And that's it, folks. Remember. You don't need to chase zodiac signs or mythical creatures. To find love just focus on real connections, common sense, and maybe brush up on your anatomy before you start talking about clitorises. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe for more no-nonsense takes and hilarious breakdowns. And hey, don't forget to turn on notifications, so you don't miss the next time. We roast bad ideas with facts and logic. See you in the next one.